Hello, welcome to another episode of Unforgettable Saying. Today we are going on an adventure around the society islands in French Polynesia. For this sail, we have my parents on board on their first oceanic passage. They are going completely out of their comfort zone, and we are proud of them for that. It's not every day that we get to host family in our floating home, so we are excited to show them life aboard. Today we are sailing, actually motoring with my parents, because the wind is quite light, so there's actually no wind. We're gonna see if along the way we can open the sails, but I don't know, maybe. This is my mom, mãe. Essa é minha mãe. Esse é o meu pai. Reni, tudo certo aí, pai? Uma boa, tranquilo, sossegado, curtindo a natureza. Let's try the main, just for. Yeah, we're gonna see how it fits. If it's good, there's no wind, but uh, well, we need to try this sail and see how it goes. See if it's. Uh, Try it with a new toy, has to play with it, doesn't matter. Of course, of course, and it, it looks so beautiful, so... Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, definitely not much wind to hold a sail, but it looks beautiful anyway. How is it the helm, Diego? Uh, this, there's a no biases keeper, so he's under training. This? Okay, not too bad. Tudo certo aí, pai? Que tal? Tô tentando manter lá dentro do... Dos graus. Deve ficar tão bad. 325 is the ideal, 330 is the ideal. Christmas sail, we are going to the pass. We are anchoring on this side of the island, just across Tahiti. And it's beautiful. to be here. It was a kind of lame passage, but there will be another way, another, another day to try, our, to try our sails. Hello from Morea guys, this was actually a quick pit stop, we are heading to Bora Bora, that's our final destination, we just stopped here to rest a little bit and to show this place to my parents quickly because we are coming back. So today the weather is perfect, it's very calm for our, our uh, unexperienced sailors I would say. We just had some rain but now the rain is gone and it's time to go! I'm really excited. First uh, overnight passage in a long, long time. Over a year, actually. What and a shame. Yeah, yeah. And we have a very special crew. We have an eight month old baby for the first overnight passage. And you have Georgia's parents. Uh, first overnight passage will be great. But now we need to get some food. We just stop into the dock here in Cooks Bay in Morea. Hopefully we can do it quick and set sail before sunset. So we're gonna do an overnight and tomorrow like... Tomorrow before lunch we'll be arriving in Hayatea, our first stop in the Leeward Islands. Woohoo! Yes! Let's go!
already getting dark. Which... No. Yeah, wow. Uh, I'm glad the gas station didn't close. We so... plan to leave at 2, now it's 5.30 in the afternoon. A minor delay. Yeah, <laughs> but that's all good. <laughs> it's all good. At least you are running away from the rain, I think, that's behind you. I hope so. I hope so. Tá confiante para a primeira navegada? Muito confiante, capitão é ótimo. A gente vai saber amanhã. We're gonna know about that tomorrow. It's uh, 3 a.m. now, Isla is still sleeping, my parents are sleeping and Diego was by himself here in the helm. Hello! <laughs> yeah, all good, there's no wind, so we are motoring. I've heard Diego trying to open the sails, but failed attempt because, yeah, I think you couldn't say you're right. At first it was very squally and after that I could sail a bit. Everybody was sleeping, so it was nice. I had the cockpit just uh, to, for myself. And now, no more wind. And yeah, I couldn't film anything because I was by myself and sorry, baby. And now we're motoring halfway through. Hopefully in the morning, the wind will pick up again and we can arrive sailing in the beautiful Hayatea. It's a very clear night, actually. The full moon is there and the sea is here Genoa. As expected, the wind came uh, better in the morning, and now we're doing steady 5.5, 6 knots, just as we approach Hayatea. It's beautiful, and yeah, I've been looking forward to this the whole night. It wasn't so great, but now we can really enjoy the pleasure of sailing, and this new May, it's stunning. I'm really stoked with my crew. Isla, Georgia and the in-laws, especially the in-laws they are taking a big leap out of their comfort zone to sail, you know, it's not their cup of tea but they wanted to, to experiment that, to see how their daughter lives and what's this sailing thing and they had sailed before in a closed base with us but this is a real ocean passage 100 miles between Tahiti and Hayatea. I'm proud of their enthusiasm, of their courage. We should never be afraid to try new things. Even if they don't love it, they did something different. We're gonna, we're gonna cherish these memories together for forever. Baby Isla, well, she's a natural. She doesn't care if she's on the boat. She wants to move, she wants to climb, she wants to grab everything, the, the wheel, the throttle lever, whatever she can grab, she wants to grab. So I don't think she felt seasick at any point, but it's hard. It's hard to stay with a baby, especially her. She has a lot of energy. She doesn't sit still, you know, never. Yeah, that's not a thing. She was a bit uh, out of practice. She felt seasick in the, the beginning of the night. She didn't take any tablets because she was afraid to, to feel drowsy and couldn't and not be able to take care of the baby. So she endured all the sickness and this morning she's feeling great. This pandemic really screwed up uh, our rhythm. You know, we were sailing a lot and out of Sudan we couldn't move much. I'm glad we came. 
We are unsure if uh, we should do with the parents, or if they should take a plane or a ferry boat to come to these islands. We decided to come. We chose a day that was very calm. Hello, ladies! Wow, this part of Rayatel looks amazing, it's incredibly beautiful, the landscape. We are just trying to choose where to anchor because there are many spots and they all look great. Cheers! Our first stop here in Hayate, uh, we came to an anchorage to the south and this place is very special because it's a sacred place we talk about this on previous episodes like those uh, wooden structures they call marai it's like the ancient temples but this specific site it's a world heritage uh, spot this is the most sacred place in the whole polynesian not only what we know today as french polynesia but the whole Polynesia, the whole Polynesia, which includes uh, Tonga, Hawaii, New Zealand, Easter Island. So this is like the, the main spot with like the big uh, religious ceremonies. This spot behind me, according to this leaflet, is where they used to, to crown the new, the new kings and stuff like that. The structures are this bunch of rocks, piled, but uh, well, you can help feeling the the holiness of this spot. Number 10, behind me, this is the main stage from the ancient uh, Polynesian Palooza. This is where they used to uh, do the big ceremonies. They got of war and got of peace. So this is the main stage, the biggest structure we have here. Fun fact, if you can call it so, ancient Polynesian culture included human sacrifices. So there was one, there's one spot there that where the altar where they used to do human sacrifices. All these things that I told you, I don't know because I'm smart. I told because I got a leaflet with all this information and I could translate with my poor French. So you might be right. Hello. Thanks for the tour. Isla, you like the place? You like this spot? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. I never expected to see my parents fully experiencing life aboard at their 70s, sailing in open ocean, hopping from one anchorage to the other. We were impressed with their commitment saving water and power, helping on the boat routines and on the sailing, their willingness to learn new things and try new experiences. It was all new for them and they turned out to be great crew. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to share boat life with them. My dad fought sea sickness and did really good. And my mom took care of Isla and helped me so much. Fazendo aí, pai. Tentando lavar algumas roupas aqui na um baldinho, voltar à época da da colonização. Tu lavou as tuas com água salgada ou água doce? Eu lavei as minhas com água salgada. Eu gosto de ficar curtido. <risos> As da mulher ele lava com água doce, ó, que gentileza. Bom dia, verdades. Olha, bom dia. Pronta para navegar, Isla? Pronta. Pronta. After our passage, now we're gonna cruise some days inside the lagoon. Hayatea has has this uh, peculiarity. You can pretty much sail all over the island, all around the island, inside the lagoon, and I think. Uh, our guests deserve some rest, so we'll be smooth sailing inside the lagoon in calm waters with beautiful views all over the place and that's what we're gonna do now. Uh, the 
jib out on the second reef and we are doing five knots. It's good speed for sightseeing. This is day two in Hayatea and today we came to explore this river which is the only river in the whole French Polynesia that you can actually sail a small boat and that's what we're doing. It's a very dense vegetation, you can see how fertile are those islands. You agree Isla? And it's yeah, so green. Very green and very pretty and let's see what, uh, what we find going up the river. Do you know how many miles we can sail up? I have no idea. Here's the end. Yeah, I guess that's it. There's a lot of logs falling on the river there and uh, I don't think we can go through. But it's been nice. Maybe 15 minutes motoring up the river and uh, there's a place to stop. We just passed by and we're gonna walk. It's like a botanical garden and you can see some flowers. Oh, the whole margins are full of flowers and stuff, but we can stop in one place and explore a bit by land. Can you listen to the silence now that you turn off the engine? How can you listen to the silence? Okay, that's true. Good question. Can you listen to the silence? This is the sound? Of? Silence. Silence. <laughs> it's Simon Garfield. Okay. <laughs> Write down in the comment, guys, what do you think? Can you listen to the silence yeah. or not? Oh, look at the size of these leaves. this for me this is uh, one of the main reasons to travel is to interact with locals and this guy is super nice super friendly he just called us and oh, you want fruits yeah and he shows his property and he has everything everything he has tomatoes and all these fruits and uh, potatoes roots coconuts papayas and well he has everything really and super kind said no 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 I don't ask for anything if you want to give me any money, you give. If you don't want, it's fine. And taught us how to do uh, a trap for pigs and and chicken. Look <laughs> so well the shoot. <laughs> oh, amazing! I love this. I love this, and you know, you see how how special are these guys? You know how connected to the environment, and they always give you good lessons. So it's yeah. Yeah, when we meet these guys, we feel we don't we know nothing because if we were like uh, lost in the middle of the jungle, he would survive for sure and pretty well and we would be like struggling. He keeps saying all the time that this is paradise, this is, this is my little paradise. So he knows what he have and this is amazing. He knows where he is. And you didn't say, but yes, he's not. he mentioned like everything is bio, everything he plants because he understands the importance. Okay. Everything is organic, yeah, because he understands the importance of don't contaminate his own land, like his family. So that's pretty cool. Guys, we want to enjoy as much as we can this adventure with family. Every sailing and every anchorage. 
there's an extra factor on all of that, and we want to share this with you. We are considering putting a forgettable tree on the market, so this can be our last adventure with her. There are some reasons for that, and we are going to share with you on the next episodes along with our beautiful days that are coming ahead. So don't miss our next videos! Thanks for watching and see you soon!